is I hope I hope I hope. Now, I want to tell you something. I have been a minister for close to 16 years. Next month is my 16th anniversary as a licensed minister. I have given over 750 talks. And I can never recall a time when I've done a talk about hope. I've done countless talks about faith and trust and inner knowing, but never one on hope. Now that may seem kind of odd to some of you, especially some of our new people, because people think of hope as being a really spiritual thing, right? You may be thinking, how could she possibly be a minister of a spiritual center and never talk about hope? What kind of crazy place is this? Well, you're about to find out. <laughs> the reason for that is that our teaching, and our teaching is called the science of mind. You've heard several references to it. Our teaching called the science of mind, and in our teaching, it's not really about hope. Our teaching is based on the spiritual law of cause and effect. So as a rule, we don't hope for things to happen. We affirm, we know that with the right thought, with the right belief, and taking the right action or taking the right activity, that we are going to bring about the things that we want to have happen. We call it consciousness. We call it awareness. And because we're working with an indisputable law, that responds to us, then we use very definite language. We use words such as know and affirm and demand and claim and accept and trust. We hardly ever use the word hope, which has a much gentler and less demanding feel to it. As a result, when we do our affirmative prayer, which we call spiritual mind treatment, don't let the name fool you, it's actually a cool process. When we do our spiritual mind treatment, we are very firm with our wording. Here's what our founder, Ernest Holmes, said about this. He said, hope is good. It is better than despair. But it is a subtle illusion and is an unconscious compromise and has no part in an effective mental treatment. And what I want to tell you is he is absolutely right when we are talking about mental treatment, when we are talking about doing affirmations, we don't use the word hope because those spiritual practices, treatment and, 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 and affirmations require that we use firm language and strong faith. Okay, are you with me so far? And what about those times when you don't yet have a strong faith or trust about something? What about those times when you're scared or you're insecure or you're nervous about something? Does hope have a place then? In my opinion, it does. And I gotta tell you, this is a new concept for me. I wrote to my uh, colleagues, we all belong to kind of an email list service, and I wrote to my colleagues saying that I was talking about hope today, and they were all like, oh, really? We don't talk about it. <laughs> so, so, so this is new to me, right? I've been in the teaching a long time, and I avoid using that word except for, you know, the things like, oh, well, I hope you can come, or, you know, I hope things go well for you, or something like that. But, but <laughs> just recently, I was listening to the newest 21-day meditation with my friends Oprah and Deepak, <laughs> and I heard a new explanation of the idea of hope, and it kind of blew my mind. And one thing I want to say, you know, I've been around a really, really long time, but I'm really grateful that I'm not so old and so jaded in the teaching that I can't learn new things and that I can't be open to things, seeing things uh, differently than what I thought I knew. So basically, what it said in this meditation, any of you do the latest 21-day meditation on happiness? 
okay, you know what, they, they're awesome. They are really, really awesome. So basically in the meditation, uh, it talked about hope as being a stepping stone to faith and knowing. Because when we're faced with a new situation and it scares the you-know-what out of us, and you do know what I mean by the you-know-what out of us, right? Okay, when it scares that, it's really, really, when it scares us, it's difficult to know the truth firmly. There's often so much fear and doubt and concern and confusion to know for sure, for sure. But it might be possible to hope in a situation like that. And then what we find is that when we've nurtured that hope, then that points us in the right direction to knowing. Is this making sense? Okay, let me share with you uh, uh, Deepak, my good friend, uh, what he said about this. He said, hope opens a path. It isn't passive, just waiting and praying that things will change. When you are connected to your true self, you sense what you need to do next to improve any situation. So hope is like a feedback loop. The more you nurture hope, the more optimistic you feel. And being optimistic, you move naturally to take the openings and the opportunities that come your way. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, that's really good. So what happens is, the more we nurture that hope and we start to see the positive results that come from it, then we begin to trust. And from trust, then comes the, the kind of powerful knowing that I'm talking about. And from that knowing comes those powerful demonstrations and manifestations that I'm talking about because the universe responds to our directive thinking. Now I realize I'm giving you mixed messages. Should you hope, should you know? What well, I'm saying do both because hope is gonna take you to know, okay? Here's the bottom line, folks. If we give wishy-washy, namby-pamby, direction to the law. We're going to receive wishy-washy, namby-pamby results. And then when that happens, we're like, well, it's not working. Well, actually, it is working, but it's working and responding to the wishy-washy, namby-pamby direction that you're giving it. Making sense? One of my favorite, fa favorite Ernest Holmes quotes is, even if you think it's not working, it's still working, but it's working by appearing not to work as according to your belief that it doesn't work. <laughs> direction, the law knows what it is that we expect because we're in partnership with it, and that becomes our result. So of course, the ideal is that we're going to know all the time, every time, we're going to have unshakable faith every single time. And sometimes we need to begin with hope and build from there. It is possible to build our faith, to develop our faith by starting with a hopeful thought, maybe this will work, and seeing a positive result. Wow, look at that. It did work. Then, the next time you use your thoughts in a positive way, in a hopeful, in a, in a knowing way, you have a little bit more confidence not only in yourself and your thoughts, but also in the process. And then from everything grows from there. Let me give you, an, uh, this is a very simple explanation, but uh, it's, it, it, it makes the point, I think. When I teach new science of mind students, usually in the basic classes, one of the first things I teach them is how to manifest a parking space. Now, the reason that I do that is not because everybody needs to have front row parking. I do that because nobody has a lot of investment. Nobody has a lot of energy about finding a parking space, right? So they can experiment 
with the power of their thinking in a non-attached sort of way. So after the first week or so, what happens is stu students come to me and they, they report back and they, they say, you know what, I went to the mall and I affirmed a closed parking space and guess what? It worked. They're so excited. Well, it really worked. But what it actually did was start to build their faith in the workings of the law. Because they can see that the law is responding to them. And then they begin, can begin to respond to it. It's co-responding. Does that make sense? Understand what I'm talking about? Take classes. You'll really get it. Let me shout and share with you what Ernest Holmes said. He says, our faith is based upon the fact that the universe is a system of law and order, and that the law of mind always responds according to the nature of our thought. So I get the students starting with something simple that they have no attachment to. They start believing it's true. They start knowing that there is a universe and a system of law and order, and they begin to use it because they begin to believe it. So one day, I had this student who, he'd been with me for a number of years. He loved the center, he loved coming to classes, but he was kind of unsure about this whole manifesting stuff, right? So on the Sunday before Christmas that year, his wife asked him to go to a store that is notorious for its terrible parking. Mm -hmm. And this was not in Calgary. <laughs> he didn't want to go, especially on the Christmas, the Saturday before Christmas, but being a smart man, he did as his wife asked him to do. And he pulled into the parking lot, and it was as crowded and as crazy as he thought it was going to be, and he said, well, I may as well give this stuff a shot. What have I got to lose? Who knows? It might work. So he affirmed that he would find a parking space right in the front of the store, and sure enough, he drove to the front of the store. That's part of the story. He didn't hang back in the back and go, oh, I hope there's, no. He drove to the front of the store, and guess what? Somebody is pulling out just as he pulled in. Now, what he told me later was that he didn't know that it was going to work, but that he hoped it would. That began a love affair for him in this teaching and the law that backs it up. He is now, I will tell you honestly, one of the clearest, one of the most positive, and one of the most steadfast metaphysicians that I know. And it started with, I hope I find a parking space at Trader Joe's on the Saturday before Christmas. <laughs> Here's what Deepak said in his meditation. Happy people are optimistic and hopeful. Hope is a positive force in their lives, which is different from feeling anxious and hoping that everything will turn out all right. When your sense of hope flows from the source, you know that new possibilities will emerge and that good outcomes are in sight. In other words, hope gives us strength until faith and trust and knowing can take over. So, what does this mean to us in the real world, not in the parking space world? I happen to know that there are people sitting right here today who are dealing with things like frightening diagnoses and relationships ending and uncertainty about money or jobs or just a general sense of the world is going crazy and I don't know what to do about it. Maybe right now all you can muster is hope. I hope I'm okay. I hope I can save my relationship. I hope there's enough money to pay the rent. I hope we don't destroy ourselves and our planet. And you know what? For right now, that's fine. It's good. In fact, 
It's perfect. Let me share with you what Thich Nhat Hanh said. He said, hope is important because it can make the present moment difficult to bear. So, excuse me. Hope is important because it can make the present moment less difficult to bear. If we believe that tomorrow will be better, we can bear a hardship today. And as we've discussed today already, hope is something that we can hold on to. So it, it's something we can grasp as we're building our faith. As we're building our faith. What the, Deepak uses the example of hope being like a thread that is leading us out of a maze. It doesn't get us out, but it is our connection to finding our way out. That make sense? It's like something we can hold on to until we can find our way out. It, it leads us in the right direction. So the question then becomes, how do you find that trust? How do you find that knowing when you're scared, when you're concerned, when, when stuff is going on? And the answer is by continually, continually reminding yourself of who you are and that you are one with the source of your being despite appearances. Everyone say this with me. I am one with the source of my being. I am one with the source of my being. Because what happens is that when we come to realize that truth, we understand that there is just one, one source, one presence, one life force. And that life force is infinitely more intelligent, more resourceful, and more responsive than we can possibly know. It lives in us and it yearns to be utilized. It yearns to be called upon. It yearns to, to be working for us. We need to allow it to do so. So the more we allow ourselves to have the hope that leads to the faith, that leads to the trust, the more we see it all around us and we understand that it is working for us. So what I would like to do is actually share a portion of the meditation with you written by Deepak Chopra. And uh, Michelle, I'm going to ask you if you can come noodle in the background, please. That's a musician term, you know, noodle. <laughs> if you are comfortable, <coughs> feel free to close your eyes. If you'd like to gaze on this beautiful lily in the water, that's another talk, you know, because lilies are in muddy water. They can't grow unless they're in muddy water and transcend it, but that's another talk. So you can look at the lily, you can close your eyes, it doesn't matter. Just allow yourself to be open to hear these words. Developing confidence in ourselves, in our ability to meet and handle all situations requires that we must have confidence in that something which is greater than we are. Then we will have spiritual self-reliance. When this is done, the lesser must always submit to the greater. Weakness will give way to strength. Despair will turn to hope. Hate will become love. Failure will become success. And sickness will dissolve into health. The action that takes place is one that moves in harmony, love, beauty, warmth, and order quietly transforming all that is unlike it. Your 
thought is creative. Not because you will, wish, hope, pray, or long for it to be. It is creative because there is a creative law operating upon it. You did not make this law. You only use it. Remember that you are not presenting God with the problem. God has no problem. God knows intuitively and the principle of divine guidance works automatically on your acceptance. Therefore, when you bring your hopes and aspirations to the divine center within you. Lay them on the altar of your faith in complete confidence. Feed your mind with nourishing thoughts, just as you feed your body with nourishing food. Feed your mind with faith, hope, an enthusiastic expectancy. And then literally, let go and let God. Everyone take in a deep breath, please. And let it go. When you're ready, begin to come back to the room. Open your eyes. Feel the energy of the room once again. So I hope that I made my point. I trust that you were even a little bit inspired, and I know that I had fun and enjoyed myself, and so it is.